Hey everyone, Robert Landis here with Ohio Warness Works. Uh, just got done putting the H-car here through its paces on the range. Uh, wanted to go through uh, some of the more detailed features of the gun and show you what it's all about. So we're gonna start up here with the barrel and muzzle brake. We've got a advanced armament muzzle brake system on it. Uh, helps with recoil and it also is a quick detach for a Mark 13 SD uh, suppressor. Next up, we got the adjustable gas system obviously original to the 1918 BAR and also our 1918 A3 semi-auto BAR. Uh, we kept the gas system because one, it's proven, and two, it works very well with the suppressed feature of this gun. Uh, throw a suppressor on there, you can adjust your gas down so you're not putting as much gas through the system, beating up on your internal components. Put it on medium for regular fire and put it on large setting uh, when you want to when your gun gets a little dirty and you want to push it a little harder. So next up, we've got the barrel. Here is the 16 inch version on this gun here, and we will be releasing a 20 inch version later on. It's using a patented dimple design on the barrel, which maintains the strength of the barrel, but also lightens it, uh, which accounts for weight and cooling purposes. Next up, we've got the handguard system here, obviously replacing the old wooden style handguard that just protected the bottom and didn't actually wrap over the top of the barrel. Uh, this one does. It's made of a carbon fiber reinforced nylon uh, to dissipate heat and also be very durable. Um, I'm not a personally a big fan of quad rail systems, so designed it with three inches of usable space on the bottom and the sides. So you can put any kind of lights, lasers, accessories on there that you wish, a bipod, uh, while still having room for your hand and also a full Picatinny rail on top for uh, thermal, night vision, etc. Going along with the handguard, we have the rear rail. We've had people ask us for years to uh, try and come up with a way to put a scope or any kind of optics on the back of our A3s. Uh, so integrated this into the system with the, along with the front rail, we put a rear rail on there uh, that you can put all of your optics and accessories on as well. So coming from the rear rail, we have the receiver. It is the same patented design we've used in our 1918 A3 for about 17 years now, uh, except this one is 25% lighter. We've uh, removed all of this material uh, while also maintaining the strength and durability of the receiver itself. Along with the light and receiver, we have new takedown pins, kind of AR style push pins that are also maintained within the receiver when you, when you release them. Um, change from the old style receiver pins where you actually had to rotate them down to pull them out uh, and they came out of the gun after you took them out. Uh, the nice thing about having them maintained in the receiver is so if you're field stripping at the range, you're not losing the pin, dropping it on the ground and stuff when you're taking down to clean your rifle. Next, I want to go over with you the new trigger group system, which has two major improvements, which are the bolt hold open system and the new mag release. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the old 1918, you used to have a button inside the trigger group here where you had to reach in and awkwardly push your finger down to release the mag. Um, most people would, if not using two hands, would try to put their thumb in here and grab the front of the mag and pull it down but it was very awkward and, and not easy to do if you didn't have large hands. Um, also is the bolt hold open system where it works with no mag and it holds back so you can make sure your chamber is clear and also the last round of a new 30 round H car mag. So when you have that in there, uh, it feels for the last round and once it's fired, it will lock back to the rear, allowing you to see that <clears throat> your chamber is empty so I want to run through and show you loading a mag into the receiver with an empty mag. So obviously we've got a 30 round H car mag here, no rounds in it, bolts held back. Put it in there, bolt release on both sides. You can push it, push the bolt release and drop the bolt forward and charge the bolt back. Knowing that there's no rounds in there, it locks it back to the rear again. Um, you have the bolt release on both sides. So if you have long enough fingers, you can push it with your right hand here. And also uh, taking your loading the new mag, if you were to put it in, you can push it with your thumb here on the other side. Obviously you've seen me push the mag release. 
It's kind of AK style where you can push it and pull the mag down way easier than the old 1918 style. All right, so along with the bolt hold open system and the new mag release, you've got a new safety selector and a new trigger system. Uh, the safety selector is a lot different than the old one, being that the old one rotated about 120 degrees up and over, so it was very awkward to push your thumb and slide it forward when you wanted to switch it on to fire from safe. The new one is very quick. With your left thumb, you can push it down 45 throw and back up to safe. It will be available in a right-handed shooter version, which is on the left-hand side, and also a left-handed shooter, which will be on the right side. Now the new trigger system we have in here is a very short six pound pull. Uh, it's very crisp and also a very short reset on it, which enables you to, as you saw earlier, shoot very rapidly if you want to. So next thing I want to go over with you is the new folding charging handle. If you remember on the A3 and, pr and prior models, you had a short knurled nub that you could grab onto to pull back, but you really could only get one finger on it. With the new system, it folds down to half of the height that stick off the original gun and it folds out to double the size so you can actually get two fingers on there to get a nice hard pull onto it. And it also is not a reciprocating system so when the bolt fires it does not move back and forth but if you do leave it forward like this and you press the bolt release it will fold back down and return to the front. All right, so finally we're at the rear of the gun here with the new buffer system. The major difference in this is, is what I like to call a linear system so the recoil comes straight back into the new hydraulic buffer and hydraulic buffer piston and is transferred straight back into the buttstock. Whereas the old style on the A3 and the original BAR came down at an eight degree angle. And when you fired it, the system actually came back and hit the piston and transferred that energy down into that eight degree angle, which in turn would give you some muzzle rise. So now that it's a linear system, the recoil comes back and it's more straight back into your shoulder. So you don't get that muzzle rise that you would uh, being that it's a lighter and shorter barrel. Uh, it also is ad uh, adaptable to the universal AR slash M4 style stock. Um, you can put that on there and any type of M4 style stock you want. All right guys, so that was all the individual details going over there for you about the gun. Uh, really happy with this product. Um, shaved a lot of weight out of it, over seven pounds, brought it down to 11 and three quarters. Uh, very manageable for a 30-06 system and uh, very low recoil, as you can see uh, before in the videos. So really happy about this and looking forward to putting out a lot more videos in the uh, near future 